Today on the newscast, new questions over whether the Biden administration recognizes Jerusalem as the eternal and undivided capital of Israel. Plus, Biden heads to Saudi Arabia today to plead for more oil production. Get all the breaking details next. Hey folks, Eric Stackelbeck here. Welcome to the Watchman newscast. President Biden wrapped up his three-day Israel visit today. He has now landed in Saudi Arabia, where he met today in Jeddah with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. Tomorrow, he will be meeting with leaders of various Arab nations as part of the Gulf Cooperation Council GCC Plus 3 Summit in Jeddah, which is a Red Sea port city. We're going to get into that in a minute. Some important developments there, including on the energy front and Biden going essentially hat in hand and asking for more oil production from the Saudi royal family. But in the meantime, some interesting, I would say troubling developments today as Biden closed out his trip to Israel. Now, before I get to that, uh, two things. I want to review what went down already yesterday, important regarding Iran. Also want to remind you to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get alerts every time a new video is posted here on the Watchman YouTube channel. Quick review before we get to today. Yesterday, and we talked about it on the newscast yesterday, you can check it out in our archives under newscasts in case you missed it. Biden and interim Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid publicly differed on how to deal with Iran's nuclear program. Biden said during this trip that it would only be a last resort for the U.S. to take military action. Lapid followed that during a joint press conference yesterday and said, look, Mr. President, diplomacy has failed. Diplomacy will not work in deterring Iran from developing the bomb. Lapid said we need a credible military option on the table. That's all the Iranian regime will understand. Biden differed at the press conference and said, no, no, no. We still believe diplomacy is the best course of action. Well, folks, I'm here to tell you that after decades now, and certainly since 2015 and the initial incarnation of the Iran nuclear deal, diplomacy with the Iranian regime has failed miserably. They are even closer to the bomb than they've ever been. They're developing ballistic missiles at a rapid rate. They are sponsoring terror throughout the Middle East and beyond. Clearly, diplomacy has not worked. It's worked for Iran. Hey, they've billions of dollars in sanctions relief. They, they've taken in and they've, they've increased their power, their military arsenal, their nuclear program. It's been great for them to kind of string the West along for years and years now. But let's bring it up to today, Friday, July 15th. And what I found so profoundly disturbing, uh, Joe Biden in the presidential motorcade, the limo, the presidential limo, also known as the beast, that presidential limo, he made his way today to a Palestinian-run hospital in the eastern half of Jerusalem, right near the Mount of Olives. And it was pretty noticeable that on that limo, there was no Israeli flag. Now, in the previous few days that Biden was in Israel, touring around the country, the limo had a U.S. flag, and an Israeli flag. But once he crossed into the Palestinian majority area of Jerusalem, his team magically removed an Israeli flag. Not only that, no Israeli officials were permitted to accompany Biden to this Palestinian-run hospital in eastern Jerusalem. Now, you might say, well, what's the big deal? You're nitpicking. So he took the flag off. Who cares? No, it's a culmination of things, folks. Number one, he very noticeably removed that Israeli flag on Israeli territory. Reminder, all of Jerusalem is Israel. All of Jerusalem is the undivided capital of Israel. President Trump, back in 2018, to his credit, recognized Jerusalem as the ancient and ancestral and undivided, key word there, capital of Jerusalem, but guess what? Israel didn't even need President Trump to do that because for over 3,000 years, Jerusalem has been the ancient and ancestral capital of Israel and the Jewish people. Nonetheless, Biden does not allow, on Israeli territory, Israeli officials to accompany him. Not only that, he tellingly removes the Israeli flag. 
and he visits this hospital. Again, Palestinian run. He pledges $100 million in U.S. aid to Palestinian hospitals throughout the region. But folks, you might say, oh, well, come on, you're overreacting. But what about the comments two days ago? And this is the main factor here. Jake Sullivan, the national security advisor for the Biden administration, announced very proudly, hey, we would love to open a Palestinian consulate in Jerusalem. Now, the White House walked back his comments a day later, but folks, there's been rumblings about this for months, and Israel has been adamantly opposed to it. The Biden administration, again, wants to open essentially a Palestinian embassy in Jerusalem. Now, right now, any Palestinian affairs are handled through the U.S. embassy in Jerusalem, the U.S. embassy to Israel in Jerusalem. But the Biden administration essentially wants to open a separate embassy, basically recognizing the Palestinians as a second national entity within Jerusalem and within Israel. Now, Israel, again, has sovereignty over all of Jerusalem. If you want to open a Palestinian consulate, do it in Ramallah, where the Palestinian Authority has its headquarters under Mahmoud Abbas. Don't do it in Jerusalem. Jerusalem already has a nation that calls it home and calls it capital, and that is the nation of Israel. And yet, the Palestinians in a future Palestinian state, which they envision, and today, Joe Biden once again called for a two-state solution, even as Mahmoud Abbas, during their joint press conference, called Israel an occupier, an apartheid nation, the usual rhetoric. Biden is committed to that two-state solution, folks. And the reason, the real reason, you saw that flag removed, no Israelis officials, no Israeli officials accompany him, and Jake Sullivan's comments about a new consulate in Jerusalem, was that the Biden administration would love nothing more than to make the eastern half of Jerusalem the capital of a future Palestinian state. They want to divide Jerusalem, folks. Make no mistake about it. And guess what? If Israel's political situation right now was more stable, you would see, I believe, the Biden administration putting on a full court press against Israel to get back to the negotiating table with the Palestinian uh, Authority and get the two-state solution, which means the division of Jerusalem, back on the table. Now, Israel, obviously very unstable politically. New elections, November 1st. Yair Lapid, not much power. He's the interim prime minister for four months until the 1st of November. So, and Biden said this today, now is not the time to restart negotiations between Israel and the Palestinians. But folks, remember what I'm telling you. Keep an eye on November 1st. Keep an eye on when there is a new, hopefully stable Israeli government And let's see if the Biden administration starts turning up the heat once you have a stable, settled Israeli government on November 1st. Folks, I think of the book of Zechariah where God Almighty says that Jerusalem will become like a burdensome stone, a cup of trembling for all nations, and that any nation that comes against it will be cut to pieces. Be careful, Biden administration. Be careful, UN, EU. Be careful, world as you covet the apple of God's eye, the city of Jerusalem. We're keeping a close eye on that, but before I close today, I have to mention Joe Biden's trip to Saudi Arabia. He left his meetings with Mahmoud Abbas and at the Palestinian hospital and headed to Jeddah. He's got a lot of fence mending to do, does Joe Biden, with the Saudi government, because if you remember in 2019, when he was on the campaign trail, he vowed to make Saudi Arabia a pariah state. He's changing his tune now, Now that the U.S. has skyrocketing gas prices, Biden is going to Saudi Arabia hat in hand to plead with the Saudis, who he called again a pariah not too long ago, to increase their oil production. Because that will ostensibly decrease gas prices, pain at the pump here in the United States, in advance of the midterm elections in November here in the United States, where it looks like Joe Biden's party may take a very hard hit if polls are any indication. So we'll see how it goes, how the Saudis receive Biden. The other thing to watch for tomorrow, this GCC plus three summit, uh, officials from Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, uh, and Iraq, who do not have relations yet with Israel, they will be alongside nations which do have relations with Israel, Egypt, Jordan, Bahrain, and the UAE, and Biden will reportedly nudge them to normalize with Israel. We'll see. Clearly, the Saudis are the closest 
And Saudi Arabia made a very positive announcement this week that they will now allow Israeli airlines to use Saudi airspace. Hey, what do you think of all of this? I'd love to see your comments on this, folks, and get your thoughts. I know we covered a lot of ground in a short amount of time today, but let me know what you think of all this. And is peace near between Israel and Saudi Arabia? Will the Abraham Accords expand? And do you believe come November 1st, perhaps even sooner, who knows, things will get very interesting when it comes to the two-state solution talk and Jerusalem and all of that. We're keeping a very close eye on it. We're keeping it in prayer. We know God Almighty still sits on the throne through it all. Take that with you as you head into your weekend. Thanks for joining us today. Until next time, God bless you. And remember, never hold your peace. Hey, everyone, thanks for checking out the Watchman Newscast. If you enjoyed this episode and want to see more, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button, click subscribe, and tap the bell icon to turn on notifications for new Watchman Newscast episodes every weekday.